Faulkner has uh, uh, got it. Thank you, Chairman. Well, obviously, after the comfort break, it's quite appropriate that we're now dealing with an application for a former public convenience in uh, Holland on Sea. Uh, the application is to uh, convert it into a cafe with internal or external uh, seating areas. Um, the plan before you, uh, the public convenience of the former ones, sit within a public open <coughs> space, which I'll show from an aerial image uh, now. Um, so they just sit to the north there. There's a public car park to the southwest of it, and this is the uh, informal uh, public open space for which the uh, existing public convenience uh, sit. Uh, this is just photographs of the uh, the redundant uh, public convenience. Uh, it's a it's a male and female toilets, or was, uh, with the various entrances at either end of that particular building. Uh, male and females. Um, that's showing existing arrangements of uh, the, the male and female toilets. Uh, very uh, standard draw drawings, I'm afraid, on this one. Um, and this is actually showing the proposed layout. So a small kitchen area, a store area, uh, in terms of where the, one of the entrances to the toilets were originally, and an indoor sitting area in terms of the cafe. And at uh, the upper end of the building, there will be a public toilet. Um, so whilst that will actually serve the cafe, uh, it will also be available for public <coughs> use as well. Uh, having spoke to our colleagues in leisure and open space today, uh, in terms of um, this particular application, it will be retained as a freehold to this council. Uh, so it will just be a leasehold arrangement uh, for use as, as a cafe. And in terms of the leasehold arrangement, one thing I was uh, keen to understand is in terms of the, the use of the public toilet, uh, the, the toilet facility that will be open for public use as well, not just purely for the use of the, the cafe. So it is actually bringing it back into use. And uh, an additional benefit to it is it will be a disabled access. It's a unisex toilet, uh, but it will have a doorway and facilities which will allow for full disabled access as well. Uh, I did ask the question whether that would be available for 24-hour use. There is a reluctance from our open space and leisure colleagues for that to be the case in the lease, uh, because whilst uh, a, a radar-type mechanism can be built in for disabled access out of hours, there is some concerns from their experience that those doors aren't always properly closed after use and uh, there is a risk of vandalism and despoiling of that particular facility out of hours, uh, mm -hmm. whereas with the cafe being in use, clearly that use can be controlled. But clearly if members do want to look at that in more detail, I'm sure the lease arrangement can, can still look at that. Um, it's not clear on this particular plan, if we just go back to the red line plan, there are areas an area outside of the actual building itself which will actually be used uh, for outdoor, outdoor uh, tables and chairs as well, but there's a very small area just in front of the building, so not spreading out into the wider area of the open space. And again, um, as I said, we will control the lease on this particular use of the building uh, and can actually control how much that area outside of the building is used for that purpose. But it does seem an appropriate ancillary use to the open space and will obviously make that more usable and pleasurable experience for people using it. Uh, the recommendations for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Now, we don't have any speakers um, from either for or against. Uh, but we do have both ward members. Councillor King will take first, and uh, then it will be followed by Councillor Winfield. Welcome, Councillor. Um, and I'm sure you won't be taking more five minutes, but <laughs> law says I must give you five minutes. Not in my. <laughs> Good evening to everyone. So the, that's the key points. Why, in our view, the application is fundamentally flawed? <clears throat> Firstly and foremost, we believe that no comprehensive equality impact assessment was carried out. The decision to close this public convenience was based on spurious antisocial behavior claims. There were no records of any incidents. In six months' time, 
The sur surgery opposite will be moving to Kennedy Way, removing the availability of the last convenience at the shops. Lack of a public convenience availability cause internal injury and thereby a burden on the NHS those injuries to be treated. Lack of public convenience causes isolation and ill mental health. TDC is one of the life well partners as well as British Toilet Association members and therefore should be recognizing and demonstrating its commitment in this regard. A public convenience at this site is required not only for local residents, visitors, etc., but also for peripatetic workers such as bus drivers, home care assistants, police, ambulance service, street cleaners, royal mail workers, all need access to public toilet with no access to a public convenience. Surely, this contravenes the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974 and Equality Act 2010. The applicant, Mr. Hazel, has not detailed what the opening hours will be. This is a crucial factor because A, people need to know when a public convenience will be available, and B, if later on Mr. Hazel applies for a drinks license and maybe a music license. Coupled with the fact there will be an outside seating on the protected open space, could lead to environmental issues such as unacceptable noise levels and antisocial behavior. Mr. Hazel's diagram of his proposed alteration to the former public convenience shows that it will be encouraging and protected open space and will extend beyond the footpath currently there. And if the application is approved, it will make a precedent for more building on the side, which would have an impact on the environment. We ask that this committee refuse this application for this and many other planning policy and this council on corporate plan as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, councillor. And now your fellow councillor. Councillor Wingfield comes up. Good evening. I can't emphasise enough about the toilets. The incidents we've had since they've been closed have been horrendous. There's been quite a few distasteful accidents with the elderly. My concern is if this CAF doesn't work, we've got no toilets again. And not only with the toilets comes a small green. Now, if you notice, as tonight, on all these new buildings, the building a green in the centre of the estates. Well, we have got a green in the centre of our village. When myself and friends used to have picnics and let our children play games on it. It's a treasure for Holland indeed. Years ago, two builders left it to the residents for this reason. I know the council now own it, but it would still be nice for them to let the residents enjoy this special place and let the children play on it like mine did 30 odd years ago. We have a task force to keep or make it a special place, not neglect it like it has been for the last few years. Just a thing to point out, it's right next to a car park in the centre of shops, near chemist, near all the vital shops for the elderly. Don't forget, people are governed when they can or can't go out. They need to go to the toilet, and they plan their journeys by a toilet. This being in the centre of the village is a very important thing. The calf will take up a fair bit of the small green and stop children playing or people meeting in the centre of the village a meeting place, which it was done for 50 odd years. And it needs to be open for the sake of the residents. We must need a toilet now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Anything to add, to Mr. Faulkner? Uh, thank you, Chairman. I uh, just really wanted to come on back to what I said within the presentation. Uh, whilst uh, 
clearly the whole building will not be used for toilets as part of this application. The proposals does include the provision of a unisex toilet, which is um, external to the building, so it doesn't have to have access through the building, which would obviously put people off using it because the inference is you are using the, the cafe uh, to actually then facilitate use of the toilets. That is not the case here. There is an external access to the toilets. It will be have a widened access which will allow for full disabled access to it. In terms of the questions of the opening hours, well, that would be in line with the use of the cafe itself, uh, which would be 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday to Saturday and from 9 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Sundays and bank holidays. And clearly, as part, we, we will still retain the freehold as the council and the leasehold arrangement. And I've had confirmation from Open Space and Leisure today um, that that lease will require that uh, full use for the public is made available for that toilet. It's not one where you're going to have, a, say, a key control or coded, as you do in Costa stores and cafes, where you have to get a code to actually use the toilet. That won't be the case here. There will be full public access. As I, said, I did discuss with them also the, the provision of it over more wider hours beyond the use of the cafe. They are reluctant to that because of potential issues of whilst um, disabled people will use the toilet, it doesn't always uh, close the door at the end of them using the toilet and then there is potential issues of uh, either vandalism or uh, various other activities within that toilet uh, facility which uh, they would prefer to avoid. But if members are obviously of a mind that uh, some form of disabled radar key access to it is made available beyond the cafe hours, I'm sure that that can be looked at as part of the lease arrangement on this building for the cafe use. Uh, in terms of the outside use, well, I'd go back in terms of uh, the area for that. Uh, looking at the red line boundary, that is pretty tight to the building. So it would be on an ad hoc informal basis particularly during summer months, I guess you'd actually have outdoor seating there, which I think will actually add to it's uh, the pleasure for people that use it in terms of the use of the, the open space more generally, providing this facility within it, I'm sure that will actually uh, be an attractive feature for, for all, all generations in terms of uh, people being able to enjoy that and actually get more, more out of it in terms of uh, drinking coffee or tea or socialising. So... There are controls in terms of the wider question, in terms of licensing. Well, that goes beyond planning. Clearly, if uh, they wanted to do more beyond it being just a small cafe, they would need to apply for that. And that, that obviously goes beyond what we're actually looking at tonight. And it would actually fall within a different use class, potentially. And they would have to apply separately for that. But any of the alcohol or other things sold from this premises would be subject to licensing. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got Councillor Alexander first. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm pleased that uh, someone has come forth and we're going to allow one of our buildings may be done that to be turned back into something useful for the community. Uh, it could be of great use to the community and the use of the loo for the general public. <clears throat> but with anything like this, you must have conditions and the conditions must be set and graveled in stone. Because we've seen this in other places where um, people have taken over this type of a, a building and there is a loo, and when you say, right, I want to use the loo, they say, no, it's for customers only. We don't want that kind of scenario to happen in Holland when our elder residents, and I put myself in that bracket, if I may, um, need to use that facility if it's there and available under a condition from us that it's made available to the general public. The other thing is about the opening times. These are not gravelled in stone. These are, I believe, they're uh, suggested opening times. Um, how you're going to get people to adhere to them, I'm not 100% sure. Um, heavy weather, rain, and what have you, will put people opening up. Um, and so it's, I can say it's very much as a, a sunshine type of activity that might attract people who are on the grass and playing kickball or whatever to come forward and to buy a drink or maybe an ice cream. Um, the other thing is about table and chairs. 
Uh, it would be nice to sit outside in an alfresco situation on the grass, sipping our cups of tea and nibbling our crisps. Um, but uh, once again, we have to be careful because in other situations which I'm aware of in my own ward, again, they've just taken over. And in one part, they couldn't walk down the promenade because the place was full up with tables and chairs and we're told that, to go around the other way. So there must be conditions set. And I'm not sure how we go about those conditions. I'm sure other, my colleagues will have plenty of suggestions on that. But that's what I'd like to say. Thank you very much. I just asked the solicitor to comment on probably on that point. Um, as the planning officer um, referred to in um, his presentation and following the um, comments that were made by the uh, ward councillors, this um, property will be the subject of a lease which will be between the council as freehold owner um, and um, the tenant. It is quite standard for leases of our properties to include, when we look at what the permitted use is of a building, to include opening hours. Um, when um, we were involved in the negotiations of the lease at the, the Nays, um, there was a, quite an important part of that was the opening hours of the toilets in relation to that facility. So it's quite a standard approach for the lease agreement that you have, as the, the council will have as landlord of the property, to include that type of um, information. And, and that's where your um, say restrictions and protections that I think you're looking for um, would be picked up on. The other thing I can say as well is I also made inquiries regarding um, what um, t what was the sort of time scale for this to be delivered um, as well. And I am aware that there are uh, meetings ongoing with the um, proposed tenant with regards to agreeing as part of the lease a schedule of works and um, some time scales of when that will actually, um, the completion dates as well. So it's not one of those things that drags on and drags on and drags on. So um, if I can just give members assurances, I think that some of the um, issues that have already picked up so far will be contained within the lease agreement. Can I come back to that yes, go ahead. <clears throat> I'm pleased to hear your reassurance and it gives, I'm not sure it gives us all comfort to know that such clauses will be placed within the lease. But I, I, under the watchful eye of our local councillors, I'm sure that any misdemeanour will be reported back. And I'm almost guaranteed that those misdemeanours, if they do take place, will be dealt with. Good. Thank you. I, I, I will add to that, uh, the, as far as I was concerned, I was worried about granting a permission and uh, then the applicant not doing anything for three years. Um, so I'm glad that those, those sort of things are already being considered. Right, now on my next list, I've got Councillor Bray. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, my ward is Little Clacton, and Little Clacton, as people may or may not know, has absolutely no public toilets whatsoever. population of Little Clacton is also quite elderly. They do still go out. But it is often mentioned that toilets aren't available. So I fully appreciate where you're coming from. Just because I haven't got them doesn't mean you shouldn't have them. Um, so I, I think we're in a situation where these toilets aren't going to reopen as toilets in the sense that they were before. So the fact that there is a toilet available in them for use of the public, I think, is better than no toilet at all. I mean, I would stress my personal experience uh, probably taints me a little bit here. Uh, my wife, until she passed away, used a radar key and struggled without one. So the, the suggestion that they shouldn't be available for a radar key is something I disagree with. I think a radar key should be available um, so that those who have radar keys, which tend to be the people who need to use public toilets most, can access it at any time. Um, the other thing I, I think is vital and it should be conditioned is that there is full access to the public during opening hours, radar key access to the public during all hours, 
and limited table areas outside. We don't really want tables all over that grass. So I accept that it could be quite nice to have some tables around it, but we don't want to fill the whole area. Um, the other thing I'd ask, given the, the comments that the monitoring officers just made regarding what we can do with the lease, is um, can we control or prohibit alcohol sales uh, through the lease? Can we do that? Sorry, I won't do any more difficult questions, I promise. There's normally a clause that says that all appropriate um, consents, licenses, permissions, etc., etc., are obtained by the tenant for any um, use within the permitted use. Obviously, when you let a lease, you say what the permitted use is going to be. Exactly. So then there is another standard clause which has said says that they would have to get all the necessary consents, licenses. Um, permissions, etc., um, in mm. regard to com <coughs> complying with that use. So <coughs> that would be your protection, because yeah. if they then did something outside of that, that would then be a breach of the lease. I, I get that. The, the question, really, sorry if I can come back, Chairman, is um, we can control the permitted uses, therefore we could make access, uh, alcohol sales not one of the permitted uses, or we could not? Well. To, to sell alcohol, they would require a separate licence, okay. which we are the licensing authority. Yeah, so we've got control over it. Okay, thank you. Good. Uh, Councillor Cawthron. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I was pretty much going to say uh, exactly what um, Councillor Bray said. Um, we have a suggested uh, opening hours, uh, 9 till 6, um, which I presume is seven days a week, but it's not stated. Um, we, can't we can't force them to open during those, those hours, but that seems a reasonable limit. Um, the toilet to be uh, available to everybody while they're open. Yeah. I mean, Must. presumably uh, they are they are maintaining the toilet uh, as, as part of running their business. It's not being maintained by the council. So a deteriorating asset is brought back to use. Um, a, a toilet is there where there is no one. We have the radar key out of ours. If Councillor Bray wants to propose that, I'm very happy to um, second yeah, second it. Yeah, um, uh, happy to propose that if uh, Councillor Cawthorn's happy to second. That's fine. I'm happy to propose with those conditions. All right. Yes, Councillor Harris. Just very quickly. Um, can the officer um, let us know when the toilet actually closed down in the first instance, please? Thank you. I'll come back as well. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't even have to open my mouth. <laughs> um, well, just to... Uh, I'd refer you to uh, paragraph 6.19 and 6.20 of the committee reports. Um, in terms that there was a wider review of uh, public conveniences in the district um, by the, a bit of a mouthful, the commercialisation portfolio holder working party in October 2016. Um, and in terms of it's not just this particular public convenience, but a number in the district were actually looked at at that time. And then the decision was taken by a cabinet on the 16th of June 2017 to close these particular public toilets. So that, that's the answer to that. Okay, thank you. Um, the, the opening hours, which you, you're obviously going to be in the uh, lease, 9 till 6, 9 till 4 on a, on a Sunday. Um, but as uh, Councillor Alexander has, has already hinted, that this CAF is pr probably going to be uh, open in the good weather. Um, so in the lease, is there, as it's going to be a sort of public toilet again, uh, is there any minimum opening hours that this business will have to open? Or is it just we let them, they're the maximum hours, but, you know, it's only going to open in, you know, June, July, August. So for the, for the colder, darker months it's going to close so it won't it won't be a public convenience i would suspect that this is another item that will be picked up in the lease we can give guidance to the people granting the lease that we would like to see um it open uh six seven days a week um and that should be put into the lease i don't think we can put it in as a planning condition Chairman, I was struggling somewhat. I think the lease would probably be the better approach on this one. Yeah. We can suggest that we want that. 
Um, I can't answer the question if it's in the lease. Um, the lease is still being drafted and negotiated because mm -hmm. I checked that with the department this morning. Um, in the, uh, the current um, interim management structure, which Ian Davis has in place, um, I'm now responsible for the assets team. So I will feed all back all of your suggestions <laughs> regarding well, the lease. So I can... <laughs> yes, come back, Councillor. In, in that case, I would be pleased to uh, support the motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. So I've now got a proposer yourself. And a seconder. Yes. So you know what you're voting on. Then you're voting uh, on the recommendation, which is page 124, plus the conditions, 8.2 on page 129. Um, and so you're aware. Those in favour, please show. You can take that as unanimous. Then, so that is granted. Now we, uh, we move to A5, which is uh, 19006104. full. This is land at Oakmead Road, St. Joseph, um, a site well known to members of the committee, I think. We've been down there four times now, but uh, um, so I'm going to hand over to Amy, I think. Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Let's wait for it to load. Sorry. Right, here we go. So we're looking at the land Oakmead Road, St Ozith, which this application is known to members. I think you've visited the site a few times now. Um, we're looking at an application for full planning permission for the construction of four detached houses um, and an access road off of the existing drive. Here's the site location plan. Um, this has been amended to include access all the way up to um, Point Clear Road, just to demonstrate the connection to the adopted highway. An aerial view of the site to show the built up area on the um, surrounding boundaries with the site. This slide just demonstrates where the site sits in terms of the flood zone, coastal protection belt and the adopted settlement boundary of the local plan. And then we've just got some site photos. So this is looking um, into Oakmead Road toward the site. That's the commercial premises opposite the site. This is a photo taken from within the site, looking north. And another uh, photo from within the site. And another looking west. And another view looking to the southwest from within the site. That's just a, a wider landscape view photo, um, and that's a, an image of the existing access, which serves um, 262 Point Clear Road currently. And just another couple of photos of the access um, from within Oakmead Road. And that's a view from Alpha Road looking east towards the site. And that's a, an image of um, the residential properties on the right hand side of your screen and the site on the left. So this is the proposed block plan. Um, probably the main point is to note that this follows a previous outline application which was approved in 2017 for five dwellings. That remains an extent permission. This application before members is a full application because it sees a reduction in the number of units. Um, when it was originally submitted, the application did propose two new accesses off of Oakmead Road to serve the development. Um, that's now been amended and the proposal will be served by the existing access which also serves 262 Point Clear Road which um, now reflects what was shown in the indicative layout approved at the outline stage. Um, so it's a collection of four dwellings of a similar design 
just a variation to the materials, 1.5 storey essentially in scale, um, detached properties, spacing around the dwellings, you've got the um, access road which shows um, a private driveway serving the properties with ample parking and turning. This is the detailed design of the properties. which, as I said, they're really similar, just a variation to the materials. Um, as part of the outline um, application, a number of conditions were imposed by members at the time. Um, because this application was made as a reserve matters application originally, all of those conditions um, have been met in terms of the submission of those details. So it full, it's a full application, but um, all the conditions that were imposed on the outline permission um, have been covered as part of the full submission. That's just a, another drainage layout. And this is the landscaping for the development. So you can see that the existing hedge on, along Oakmead Road is to be retained and enhanced, and the perimeter boundaries of the site are also going to be planted um, to soften the, the visual impact and the wider landscape impact. Um, this is just an, in, uh, an illustrative block plan from the previous outline approval, just to show that the numbers were originally um, five units and this has now been reduced to four um, and also shows the originally approved um, access point um, and illustrative layout for the site, which the full application um, now incorporates. And that's the previous street scene. So you can probably see that the proposal is now um, a little, little bit lower in height and, uh, again, the numbers have been reduced from five to four. And there we go. The recommendation is of approval. Thank you. Yeah, that as Amy has just said, is showing five, but in fact this application, of course, is for four properties. Right, now, speakers, um, on this I've got nobody against for all the parish, all the ward members. Um, I've got the agent, Mr Snow, who's sitting patiently at the back. I don't know whether there's anything he wishes to add, or uh, I'll leave it up to him at this time. Very grateful, sir. Um, in which case, we will move to our um, uh, speakers. I have two so far. I'll start with Councillor Bray. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, this, this, is, this is a rare animal. This is, um, we uh, visited this site some time ago. It became clear uh, both what the parish, the local people, and what we wanted. And uh, it seems to me, and others may correct me, but it seems to me that the developer has complied with what we wanted. Um, uh, unusual. Uh, the, the change in the access is exactly what we asked for, as I remember. Um, everything else seems to be as we would want it to be. I have no issues with this. I would like it if more developers were as helpful. Um, and therefore, uh, Chairman, subject to further debate, I'm quite happy to propose approval for this application. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Alexander. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Bray. You're welcome. <clears throat> I've just resigned in what he said. I'm willing to second this application. We went to the first time, I think it was in March, if I'm not mistaken, and we went along and we saw the application. Uh, well, we made certain stipulations that we wanted done. The developer has listened intently and come back and has proven themselves to be very worthy of, uh, of his trade. And therefore, I, I commend him and I commend the uh, officers for putting this together. And I see no reason why we can't just go ahead and, and approve it. Agreed. So I've got a proposal in a second. Does anybody uh, wish to comment further? In which case, it'll be the fastest application tonight. I'll put it to you. Um, that is uh, for approval, subject to the uh, conditions in section 8.2, which I haven't got here, but I uh, uh, can't give you the page number. I can. I should be able to. Um, 
but anyhow, subject to those conditions as specified uh, in 8.2, those in favour, please show. That is unanimous, it is granted. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. It has taken a long time to get it to that, but nevertheless, we've got there now. So, good. Uh, we now move on to application. It's A6. It's application 1901667 full. It's for the erection of two dwellings to the land of the west of 45 Harridge Road, Lawford. And... Amy's got this one as well. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so, yep, yeah, um, as the Chairman said, we're looking at the land to the west of 45 Harridge Road in Lawford. The development is for a um, full application for the erection of two detached dwellings. This is the site area here. Um, you'll also note that this red line has um, been amended, similar to the previous application, just to incorporate access to the adopted highway this is an aerial view. So of particular importance in the consideration of this application is um, the appeal decision for a development of a single dwelling allowed, um, just shown there by the star on the map. Site photos show um, a view of the site access looking west with the application site shown there just behind that row of trees. That's looking into the site. That's looking towards number 45 Harridge Road, again, into the site. That's um, another view of the access in the other direction, looking east. That's a direct view from the access towards the site. And that's a view of the neighbouring property adjoining number 45. So the proposed block plan shows um, two dwellings in a linear arrangement, detached, as I said. Um, the design and scale of the dwellings has been amended. So it was originally um, two detached four-bed four bed dwellings. This has been reduced to three-bed. The layout's also been changed um, to remove the garages just to ensure a more spacious overall layout. Um, but the dwellings are now served by parking bays to the side of the properties. The um, frontage also shows an area of um, visitor parking or additional parking and turning. So the um, amenity standards are met and the parking standards are met. This is just a, a view of the, the proposed elevations. The plans provided are um, a, a handed plan. Um, so that's the the rear and side views, and then the street scene elevation demonstrates the, the front elevations for both dwellings. As I said, these have been amended um, to incorporate um, features such as dormers, which are um, typical in the, in the locality. And that's just the floor plan to show the arrangement. As I said, three dwelling, uh, three bedrooms, sorry. So this is um, the approved plan allowed on appeal at number 43 Harridge Road, which I highlighted on the first couple of slides, um, which is sort of 20 metres, I think, um, to the, the west of the site that we're looking at here. This is also a, an example of a recent development approved under delegated powers by officers for um, the erection of a single dwelling at 56 Harridge Road. Again, this decision was um, recommended for approval by officers due to the appeal decision that I mentioned earlier. Um, so I'll just go over the, the main points of that. Um, so what was considered as part of the appeal decision um, was the sustainability of the site in terms of the economic, social and environmental objectives. Um, 
in this instance, it's the social objective that's particularly important, where the inspector concluded that there were um, sufficient links in terms of public transport uh, within easy walking distance of the site to access um, the larger settlements of Ardley, Manningtree, Missley and Lawford, um, and also Colchester beyond. Um, so in that instance, the principle of residential development in this locality has been established by the appeal decision and, as I said, the, the later approval here. So I'll go back to this one. So in terms of the environmental objective and the, the impact on visual amenity and the character of the area, that did take on a, a different approach than the, the one on allowed on appeal, which was for just a single dwelling. Um, but in this instance, as I said previously, the spacing around the dwelling, the amenity, um, garden sizes, parking, that all meets the standards. Uh, the sighting of the dwellings still retain a good setback from the road um, and are mostly screened by the existing trees which are to be retained. And we, I think members raised a couple of questions earlier on regarding the plot widths of the development and the impact of those detached properties rather than um, semi-detached properties which are the prevailing character either side of this site. Um, so I had a quick look and the development is approximately 12 metres in width for each plot and number 44 is around 11 and number 45 is around 12 metres. So the, the plot widths are very similar to what's um, currently in the residential development either side. Um, the parking, as I said, meets the standards, but just for um, clarity, they're 3.8 metres wide, um, other than a small pinch point here, just on this boundary where my cursor is. And then the, the depth of those parking spaces um, is just under 12 metres. Um, in terms of the detached um, proposal for the dwellings rather than um, semi-detached, there are examples um, opposite the site um, and within the vicinity of detached properties. The um, consideration of a detached dwelling was covered by the planning inspector in the previous appeal decision that I mentioned for number 43 um, and said that it wouldn't be particularly harmful given the fact there are other examples of detached properties in the locality. So the same approach has been taken here. Um, I think that's everything. So, yeah, um, the application is recommended for approval. application that welcome any okay. good evening to you I fully support this application and ask the planning committee members to follow the recommendations of the planning officer and head of planning and vote to approve without delay and that they may not let this slip through the net your fellow councillors have called this application before the committee citing setting of harmful precedents, the 0.12 hectare site being outside the village settlement boundary, previous refusal decisions, a loss of growing land and not a sustainable location. Councillors were reminded that precedents were set by planning application 17 stroke 02143 that planning committee approved 16th of, 6th of March 2018, 18 stroke 00469 approved on appeal and 19 stroke 10353 approved at committee on the 22nd of October 2019. The site and area is sustainable. Any loss of growing land would be insignificant to the hundreds of acres of hectares of Grade 1 agricultural land lost to the proposed tendering Colchester border garden community. The uh, adopted local plan 2007 is 13 years out of date and has limited weight. The emerging local plan has not been found sound and is based around the <coughs> National Planning Policy Framework 12. 
It has very limited weight, and that is given by Will Fuller on September 2019. The suggested amendments to the Section 1 local plan, February 2020, sent to all members of the planning committee and the planning officer, is based on the National Planning Policy Framework 19. SP1 states, sustainable development, when considering development proposals, the local planning authorities will take a positive approach that reflects the presumption in favour of sustainable development contained in the National Planning Policy Framework 19. The LPAs will always work proactively with applicants to find solutions which mean that the proposals can be approved wherever possible and to secure development that improves the e ecological, social and environmental conditions of the area. It goes on to state, where there are no policies relevant to the application or the relevant policies are out of date, the LPA will grant permission. I support this rec and recommend this application for approval. Gary Guyver informed me today that the suggested amendments, EB091B, had no weight, and so consequently, being part of the emerging local plan, the emerging local plan has no weight. Therefore, National Planning Policy Framework 19 is the automatic go-to, and paragraph 64 will give Tendrin and Councillor Harris there guidance for affordable homes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. Um, and now a member of the public speaking okay. against it, Mrs. Uh, Anne Day. Mrs. Day is here. Mr. Day, you've got Good evening. three minutes when you're ready. I am Anne Day of 46 Harris Road, next door neighbour. Access has too sharp a radius for new housing. Too many driveways converging on one spot. At present, there are two inhabited buildings with three children of school age at rear of 45. If development is permitted, there possibly could be another four plus children. If 45 and 46 are sold, potentially even more children, causing gridlock in mornings at point of driveway access due to volume of vehicles using A137 now. Point three, safety for new inhabitants of housing. 45 Harridge Road has seven acres of land, equestrian business and multiple business uses. Vehicle body repairs, spray booth, carpentry business, vintage American vehicle repairs, saddlery business, and household clearance working from this site. All the, abo all the above need machinery, large vehicles, and agricultural vehicles. We have proof for you to see at the end of my speech. The 15,000 bird broiler house has not had change of use from agricultural. Potentially, this could restart, and there would be three or four large vehicles a week entering and leaving property over a six-week crop period. Bedding in, chicks in, two lorries of feed a week. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Birds out, manure out. Correspondence from Tendering District Council stated to be cleaned out twice a week, requiring two additional large commercial vehicles in 1986. At present, part of the broiler house is used for the body repairs with the spray booth, which is highly inflammable, and the building is mainly of timber construction. We did have a fire here two years ago in the outbuildings with these businesses. We would also like to point out 
that we own the majority of the shared entrance and half of the soil drain which the new development are proposing to use without our consent. The proposed development building line is Ford of 45 and 46. Finally, we would like to show you these photographs enlarged of 36 large hay bales which were delivered on the 8th of February 2020 on tractor and trailer with forklift to 45, using same entrance as proposed housing with no segregation from development. I strongly object to this and consider it to be dangerous for the new housing. Thank you very and much. And I've got Mr. these Dad. photographs to show you. Do you want to see them? Um, I, up to the committee. We don't normally because we've been out on site, but um, I'm, I'm looking at committee members. Uh, no, they... I don't want to go over one. Yes. Yeah, okay, if you... And whilst... I'd ask Mrs Day if you'd just pass them around and, and we'll, we'll sort them out as and when. Um, I've got a question for the officer at this time. Mrs Day has highlighted something that I wasn't aware of, that there's a car... Uh, repair yard at the back, uh, quite an industrial area at the back. Are we aware of that? I, I can understand why all the chickens would be there, uh, it, but the cars and various spray painting, and I wasn't assured. Didn't think I know anything about that. Um, based on the planning records that we have, um, there's nothing to suggest that those businesses are permitted. Um, but information that has been received by the agent suggests that the majority of the buildings are now redundant um, or used for storage and association with the dwelling itself. So there may be a few businesses operating to the rear of the site, but there's no planning records that suggest um, that it would be the, the use that... Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but, I mean, that could that could potentially be looked into a bit further just to ensure that all the correct permissions have been obtained. Right. Um, now, um, the ward member is Councillor Val Googliami. Um, she'd like to come forward. Yes, good evening, everybody. Thank you for allowing me to speak. First of all, I'd like to give you a bit of history about these, um, these uh, buildings. They, are <clears throat> they were all given in a by a trust to the Land Settlement uh, Association. These were all houses that were given to bring people down from the north to the south to restart their lives again in between the two world wars we had. So that was the first thing. They're all agricultural. Uh, unfortunately, there has been permission allowed for one or two of the things to have, but they've only had one dwelling on them. And as you were talking earlier, there is a thriving business going behind there with different things. So I think that ought to be investigated anyway. Um, you all saw the overdevelopment is going to be on that plot of land and also the shared access now, the shared access on your first, bit, uh, first block plan you gave, no, yeah, where the red line, yeah, the, where the red line is, it isn't, it is more over to where the number 46 is. That is not actually accurate. So, at the moment, they've got no access to this building site um, without, the, without the people in number 46 giving them permission. So that's one of the objections. The other objection is, like we've all said, it's overdevelopment. Um, we have, in Lawford, we have our fair share of housing developments, as you're probably all well aware. We have um, plenty going up. They would actually... To, uh, the schools are all full. They are building new classrooms on the schools because the schools are all filled. And this is family homes we're talking about. 
Um, it's, it's going to be, cause a lot of problems because it's, as you probably saw it, it's not far from the bend in the road. And at the moment, I say it is all agricultural land, so they've got to apply for uh, consent to into building sites. Um, so I would actually, uh, the parish council have all had their say and they think it's overdevelopment. It is rural land. Um, it is setting a precedent because I say there are two, but they've only had one development on them. And actually seeing the one that is not far from them, uh, if you were to allow building to go ahead, you must look at the materials because the one that is being built is totally out of order with all the other buildings there. So in that, I don't think um, I would like you to reject this or look into it even more, and especially with all the stuff that is going on behind number 45, because I don't know whether they've got planning permission to do exactly what is happening there. I'll leave it like that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. And now, finally, the uh, agent, Mr. Philip Morphy, please, if he's... Welcome, sir. You've been sitting patiently. You understand the procedures. <laughs> thank you, Chair. Get uh, yourself settled. <laughs> um, Chair, members, thank you for this uh, three minutes. I will be very brief, given the uh, hour. Um, as has as already been very well covered by, by the planning officer, there's certainly precedent for these types of developments in this situation. Uh, two have been cited and noted on the, on the screen above, and we are very much falling along the line of that sustainable development that the planning inspector has identified. The reason we have two buildings is simply that our, our site is wider than the others have been uh, granted permission on. So, we can put two on and still maintain the relevant spacing and sizes of plots that have been uh, pointed out earlier, sort of 12, 13, 14 metres. We're following the rhythm of, of, the, of the street. Um, there have been lots of support for this application, as, as already articulated, um, and there have been a few objections which you acknowledge. A few technical matters regarding drains, which I can assure you the main drain is very deep, 225 mil of diameter, so we could quite happily take another 50, 60 dwellings without yeah, being any issues. <clears throat> We've also touched upon what's going on in the back of the site. Um, I am informed that it's, it's used purely for family storage and family, family items, and I'd urge the members just to concentrate on the site where they're talking about here, which is the red line area. This is purely a garden. You know, it's unused garden, unused grass space, as you would have seen from your, from your site visit earlier. There's no agricultural use. There's no use of any types other than unused. And the shared access seems to be the main problem. I believe that is adequately covered by condition 11 of, of the officer's recommendations, which addresses the minimum widths we need to get access to the site to preclude any, any issues with next door. Um, by maintaining that 5.5 metre width that has been stated in the, in the condition, I'm sure that we will satisfy any concerns there may be about the shared access. Lastly, I'd just like to say we, this design has come at the end of a great period of consultation with the local authority. We have endeavoured to follow the local vernacular so that we have this familiar brickwork, we have the dormer roofs, etc. So we are trying to blend in with the local environment. environment. And I would just like to say thank you for the, for the time to speak and for the planning, planning officer's in, engagement with this process. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I'll ask uh, Amy if she's got anything she wants to add. Um, yes, yeah, so in the officer report, um, I have addressed the objections in terms of highway safety and land ownership and access rights. So just to point out to members that, as you know, land ownership and access rights are not material planning consideration and they would be a legal matter between the relevant parties. 
Um, notwithstanding any sort of confusion or dispute over the uses to the rear of the site, the application is for two dwellings only. The traffic movements would not be excessive. The um, layout of the site does allow for vehicles to turn before they leave the site um, and there would be visibility before leaving the site itself and the main access. So there's no issues in terms of highway safety or potential conflicts there. Um, and the Highway Authority raised no objections subject to conditions, as you know. Thank you. Right, councillors. Yes, Councillor Cawthorn. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I don't really see any, any problems with this um, application. Um, we have considered a red line, a uh, red lined plot, not, not what may or may not be happening behind. Um, it's clearly a sustainable location. Um, the houses as proposed uh, seem very similar in form to number 43. Um, I don't really see any harm. Overdevelopment of the plot is very subjective. I, I don't see it as overdevelopment. Uh, it makes a modest contribution to housing need, as, as we uh, so often hear with these uh, developments. Um, I think a refusal um, could be considered unreasonable if this did go to appeal. We, we've allowed uh, houses a few yards uh, in either direction, I think, 43 and 50-something. Um, I don't see any problems with it. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Harris? Um, well, well I, I don't actually agree. Um, I, my first view of the site uh, when, I, when I, you know, when, when we pulled up this morning was, um, was that it was quite a, a tight, compact site and to get two um, detached houses on that plot would have been a bit of a, a squeeze and a bit of a shoehorn to get, get them in. Um, when, when we left the site, you know, I, I purposely asked the driver to you know, go along the length of the road so that we could get a view of all the houses that were there. Um, and for me, having two uh, detached houses in very close proximity uh, seems out of keeping with the, uh, the area and out of character. Um, you know, nowhere along that road were, were, were there, uh, there, there two there. Um, the, the, you know, it's been mentioned that there's been precedents set with other houses that have been granted permission, you know, some on appeal. Um, well, I would say that's not, uh, you know, we're not judging apples with apples here um, because that they're singular buildings um, and this is two. I think had the applicant come here with one house, then I'd, I'd find it very difficult to refuse it and I probably would approve it. Um, I, even if, I mean, I think it's out of camp. I, mean, I think I'm right in saying that the houses either side are semi-detached and I think that would even then be in keeping with, with the, the area. So one building, whether it's detached or one singular detached building, rather than two separate buildings, I think would, would be in keeping. This, for me, isn't in keeping. Um, and for that reason, you know, I, I, will, I will propose that uh, this is refused. All right. Uh, Councillor McWilliams. Thank you, Chairman. I totally agree with everything that my colleague has just said, and, uh, um, and I quite agree with the comments about a semi, you know, to yep. a pair of semis would be in keeping with the rest of the properties that were within that area. It's not just on one side of the road, it's on both sides of the roads, I think, which is what I observed, and uh, to be in keeping. Um, I don't think I can really add much more to what you've just said, but I'd like to just ask the officer a question because we did have this appeal put in front of us this morning. Yep. And I, I just noticed a bit more to do with the highway side of things, actually. Um, number 17 and the comment that is made there, it's the last comment, but I also see that there's some informatives, there's four of them um, from highways. Is that in effect? Is that relating to that comment that was made by the inspector on item 17? It's just, just a query. I just would like to know. OK. 
Okay, so point 17 of the appeal decision um, relates to um, the conditions imposed by the inspector. Um, he says, I'm also attaching conditions necessary for highway safety. So turning to the conditions that were imposed, um, from what I can see, it would be condition three, which says prior to the occupation of the development, the vehicle turning facilities shown on the plan should be constructed, surfaced and maintained free of obstruction within the site at all times for that sole purpose. Um, so that's a fairly standard condition that we impose on many housing developments to ensure that the um, plan that we consider and approve in terms of the access vehicle parking and turning um, is provided before those dwellings are occupied and retained for that purpose. Um, so in terms of the application that we're looking at currently, um, like I said, the Highway Authority ha have no objection to the development subject to conditions, um, which includes a very similar, if not the same. Yeah, so within the recommendation, condition 12, um, yeah, does the same thing as the the condition imposed on the appeal decision. Sorry. Right, come back. Yeah, I just want to thank the officer just for confirming that for me because obviously you see these things and I just want to make sure that everything is in place from that side of the but and that we are actually applying it. But on the other hand, I agree with what's best being said and I shan't be uh, supporting this. Right, Councillor Bray. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd like to second Councillor Harris's motion uh, to refuse. What I don't like here is we have two small properties uh, next to each other, very close proximity. I see nothing else like that along that road. I agree with Councillor Harris. This is out of character with everything else down there. I also agree with the suggestion that's been made. If this had been a pair of semi-detached houses, as in fact the houses next to it are, that really would have worked. It would One large building split into two units would have been fine, but two separate units absolutely looks different to anything else down that road. It's not in keeping with the character. Um, I can't find anything else wrong with it, but actually that's too much. So I'll second Cass Harris. Thank you. Councillor okay, Alexander. Yes, um, I, I too agree with both uh, Councillor McWilliams and Councillor Bray. <clears throat> when we saw the site this morning, the thing that the thing that came across strongly to me was the fact that the area, I believe, is outside the village edge anyway, um, has its own peculiar characteristic, which has been laid over much of its history throughout the years and slowly development has started to take over in an area where I believe that it would be impossible to make such, um, uh, uh, such applications and build such houses there. The area was tight. There was um, access to the rear, although that is not applicable to this application, but what it could mean, if we give permission, um, to build two houses there, would that business, um, illegal or legal, um, whichever status it holds, at the rear cease, and what kind um, of impact would it have on the people who are going to live there? But my biggest objection to this is the impact it will have on the village and the way that this is laid out. Um, I'd, I think that two is over development. Um, I would be very reticent even to go with one, looking at it the way um, I see it. To me, it's just pure overdevelopment, and it's just not in keeping with the street scene whatsoever. Right, I have a proposal for refusal um, against officer's recommendation, so we'll have our facts lined up. Um, and uh, I'll ask the officers whether before we were to vote, whether there's anything they wish to add. I gather from the chair you're talking about uh, overdevelopment on the site and not fitting in to the street scene. Um, 
but that you would be happy to accept a, either, either a single building or a uh, pair of semis detached. Is that, have I got it right? Well, let's see what comes. It would be easier to. And so uh, now you know what we're considering. Does anybody else wish to speak on those points or not? In which case, I'll put it to the vote that this application be refused on the grounds of overdevelopment. Um, and not fitting into the street scene. Now I'm going to ask officers whether that would hold up um, if it came to a challenge. Yes, Chairman. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Right. Okay, so you know what you're voting on. Those in favour of refusal, please show. And we'll make it six. And those, uh, seven, and those against, is against, and one against, so that application, as it stands, is refused. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I think that brings us, does it not, to the end of the agenda? Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and whatever the town hall clock says... Ten to ten. <laughs> It is 10 minutes to 10, so thank you very much.